viewers, thank you for your wonderful patience and also for your genuine love for the things of God. We are going to witness what the living God Almighty, Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, are going to do to all children of God all around the world today. But before then, let us agree with the word of God. Turn with me to the book of John chapter 15. We are going to take it from the beginning to where the Holy Spirit would want us to end. And then we will allow the Spirit of God to operate. Are you ready? Let us read together. John chapter 15. I am the true vine and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. Verses 5. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered. And they gather them and throw them into the fire. And they are burned. Verses 7. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. This is a spiritual blank check given to all obedient and faithful children of God. I'll read again. John chapter 15, verses 7. I'll read again. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. Hmm. Did you hear that? What do you desire in this year, 2022? These are things that God can easily do for you. If only you are going to arise and go back to God. Did you hear that? Verses 8. By this my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit, so you will be my disciples. The grace of abundance, multiplication, prosperity, increase and growth has been promised and graciously given to all disciples of Jesus Christ. If you are one, by your fruits you shall be known. Can we come together and look at things from God's point of view? If God himself Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit were to be present in our midst, what would their presence be like? What would be happening where God is, where Jesus Christ is, and where the Holy Spirit is? Think about this. As you ponder over these spiritual questions, that will help you to know that whatever that is going to happen now, that may be beyond your understanding, beyond your reasoning or comprehension, should not be a surprise. It is as it should be by God's divine will. The woman that was caught in the act of adultery found herself in the presence of Jesus 
and her many sins were forgiven, and she was justified and sanctified to walk with Jesus. Jesus said it openly, I tell you, I am the light of the world. Whoever walks with me will never walk in darkness. Where the presence of Jesus is, there is always the fullness of God's light and glory. Sin represents the dark world. When you commit sin, you become part of the world and kingdom of darkness. Those who by sin belonged to the kingdom of darkness, by the grace of God, which is only found in Jesus Christ, can become part of the kingdom of light through God's only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. He is the true vine. No matter your position in the world, no matter your nationality or race, your gender or status, no matter your popularity or fame, you are simply one of the branches of the true vine. All of us are connected to the true vine and there is none other that is regarded as the true vine than Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the Son of the living God. This is the year of God, Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. The Father himself is the vine dresser. He supplies the resources. He supplies the life. He supplies everything to the vine. The branches of the true vine only tap what is being supplied by God to the vine. Let us cooperate with the trinity of heaven at work. How do you cooperate? The first step towards God is sincerity. Your sincerity will allow you to present yourself the way you are. As for me, I am a sinner. What about you? No one is righteous, not even one. No one is faithful, not even one. No one is holy and pure, not even one person. What about you? How do you present yourself in the presence of God? Two people went to the house of God to pray. One came out arrogantly to say, look, I am a good tither, I pay a lot of tithe, I am always available in the church, cleaning the hounds, doing the work of God, and I have been giving my offerings and thanksgiving, I even pray more than expected. I am not like the other person, this chronic sinner over there, so God, I need my desire to be granted. Think about that. The other second person wouldn't even raise his face to the sky. Was very much sincere, not just to himself, but also to God. And he said, God, I am not even worthy to be in your presence. I am the worst sinner. I deserve judgment. If you are willing, you can just forgive me of my sins. The desires of the first person that approached God's presence with pride and arrogance was not granted. The man that condemned himself and saw himself as the worst sinner on earth went home not only forgiven but justified. The forgiveness of your sins deals, destroys, and removes the root of all your pain or problem. If you amass wealth, have mansions, buildings, popularity and fame, while you are still living in sin, you are spiritually impoverished. You are spiritually poor. 
what a wretched life that is. So, how do you see yourself in God's presence? We are talking about the first step towards God. The centurion came to Jesus and said, Look, don't even allow anybody to tell you that I am the builder of this synagogue where you want to minister. I know that I am corrupt. I know that I am not worthy. I know that I'm a sinner. I do not count myself worthy to have you come under my roof. Just stay where you are and speak the word. And say a word, I believe the purity of God in your word will set my sick servant free. In other words, I know my sick servant will be healed. That was his own kind of desire when he came to the presence of Jesus. What is your desire? And how do you approach the presence of the Trinity of Heaven? Was his desire not granted? Yes or no? If you don't know the answer, I will tell you. Jesus Christ himself said, I have not found such an amazing faith, not even in Israel. And his sick servant was healed at that same hour. Meaning, his desire was granted. Let us stretch it out to another part in the Bible. Simon came to the presence of the Spirit of God with money to buy the baptism of the Holy Spirit. He came arrogantly and said, let me also give the apostles money so that by, by the laying of their hands on me, I can also receive the Holy Spirit and the baptism of the Spirit of God. Remember, we are talking about the presence of the Trinity of Heaven. We talked about God. We also talked about Jesus. And we are citing another living example that has to do with the Spirit of God. What became of him? Peter stood his ground in boldness and said, Your money perish with you, for you thought you could buy the gift of God with money. Freely we have received... And freely we are giving. You don't need to pay money to receive anything from God. Go and repent and follow the path of obedience. And the Holy Spirit you are looking for will be your portion forever. What happened? He suddenly came back to his senses, retraced his former steps, and demanded for prayer of forgiveness, and said to Peter, can you remove these curses from me? Pray for me so that my sins will be forgiven and these curses will not fall upon me. It is always good for everyone to be sincere, not only to God, but to Jesus Christ and to the Holy Spirit. If you are not sincere to God, you cannot be sincere to Jesus Christ. If you are not sincere to Jesus Christ, you cannot be sincere to the Holy Spirit. If you are not sincere to the Holy Spirit, you cannot even be sincere to yourself and to your fellow human being. Present yourself the way you are. God loves sincerity. God is in all ages bringing to himself a generation of spiritual, sincere, faithful and humble worshippers who would worship him in spirit and in truth. If it is not in spirit, it is not in sincerity. If it is not in sincerity, it is not in truth. How many times have you not been sincere to God, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, to yourself, to your husband, to your wife, to your siblings, to your colleagues? And to other people. Anytime you take the step of insincerity. You are moving closer to Satan. And what he has he gives. Whenever he comes to any single person. He comes to offer three missions. 
three spiritual gifts of destruction, killing, stealing, and destruction. If you say that you've not been moving closer to Satan, now check your health. What is happening? Everyone was initially created with perfect and good health. What is happening to your health now? If you say that you've not been moving closer to Satan, check your finances. Check your marriage. Check the state of your heart. Even there are a lot of fears within. You don't even believe nor trust yourself anymore. Why are you depressed and suicidal? Why are you uncertain of what would happen next? Arise and go back to God. Because you can. This is the year of God, Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. You have been spending so much time in the ocean of pain, sickness, disease. Sins and sinful desires. Jesus Christ pulled Peter out. And brought him back to the boat. Peter was pulled out by Jesus when he was sinking. Where are you? Where is your spiritual life? Where is your health and career? Where is your marriage? Where are your children? What about your siblings? You need to be pulled out by the mighty power of God that does not beg Satan. Jesus Christ never begged the sea. Jesus Christ never begged the water. That was almost engulfing Peter. He stretched his hand and drew him out and put him in a spacious boat. Your spiritual life need to be enlarged. Your spiritual coasts need to be enlarged so you can enjoy the grace of abundance, good health, prosperity, and the like. God sent me to preach this message so you can be revived not only spiritually, but in all areas. I believe you are seeing the life you're living the way you should see the life you're living. I believe you're going to be humble and sincere enough to always be in the presence of God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. The psalmist decided to say, I had rather be in a doorkeeper, even in the house of the Lord than to dwell in the tent of the wicked one. Life is too short to be wasted in sins and sinful desires. Life is too short to be wasted in pain. And things that have no lasting significance or value. The highest thing that can happen to any child of God is to be in the presence of God. Where are you? Even the prodigal son retraced his steps, retraced his steps, came back to his senses arose and went back to his physical father, and he was not rejected. God loves, receives, cares, and nourishes the souls that are repentant. Anyone can repent. Anyone. Did you hear that? The highest aspiration the highest desire in life is the desire to reach and be with Jesus Christ. The final destiny of any child of God is to spend 
once in eternity with Jesus Christ forever. Those who are already on the path to the way and kingdom of darkness, I send the fire of God's direction to your soul, spirit, and body. And I command your life to be, re to be redirected to God and his heavenly kingdom. I can see you turning and going back to God. I can see you connecting to God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Right now, receive the grace. You receive the grace. You receive eternal life. You receive healing and deliverance. You receive the kingdom of God into your soul, spirit, body, and family. Receive the presence of God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit into your life forever. In the name of Jesus Christ, I am seeing you dwelling under the shadow of the Most High God. I am seeing your life being sheltered under the protection of the living God Almighty. Not only in this year, 2022, but also in the years to come. I command your soul, spirit, and body to remain in God's presence forever. In the name of Jesus Christ, Peter cried out and said, Lord, to whom shall we go? For you have the words of eternal life. One of the thieves said, remember me in your kingdom, even in your paradise. And these people we are also taking. Where will you be if rapture takes place? What will Jesus Christ find you doing? Where will you spend your eternity? When are you getting ready for the things that is bound to happen? When are you getting ready for the things that are bound to happen that cannot be stopped by anyone? That that death is sure should affect the way you spend your life and use your life today. That life is sure and truly given by God should also affect the way you live it and use it. Apostle Paul cried out in Acts chapter 17 Verses 28. And he said, In him we live. In him we move. In him we act, talk, and have our beings. In Galatians chapter 2, verses 20, what did he say? Let us read so you can hear for yourself. Galatians chapter 2, verses 20. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Verses 21. I do not set aside the grace of God, for if righteousness comes through the law, then Christ died in vain. This is the year that you should allow your life, your decisions, your thoughts, your words, your actions, and also your inactions, your mind, and your conscience and every part of your being to be driven, ruled, coordinated, controlled, and supervised by God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Right now, I leave you in the presence of God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit forever.
heaven and the heavenly hosts. God himself and the rest of the trinity of heaven are already celebrating because of your redemption. Congratulations. Shalom.